Up. Three, sir. Down. Up. Four, sir. Down. picking up trash today around the Air Force Base. This is part of our community service project.
afternoon, sir. Hi. All right, so my question for you is, as a veteran of how many years, sir? Nearly 20. Nearly 20 years, what has it been like spending the last five weeks with a group of non-prior um, HPSB students? Uh, First Lieutenant Greg Geisler, uh, it's been a lot of fun the last five weeks working with a group of non-prior service personnel that are all just starting their own career in the Air Force. After 19 years, it was uh, great to be able to impart some of my wisdom and experience uh, on you guys and just see you really come out of your shells and, and you know open up to show us who you really are and take what we've learned uh, through the leadership courses and uh, exercises that we performed and uh, you know bloom into this whole different person and I hope you guys take that with you uh, into your medical careers and uh, you know how you lead uh, in the future lead your airmen and uh, treat your patients I hope has all you know that impact uh, has all started here. What is the reasoning behind why you chose the Health Profession Scholarship Program to go to medical school? Sure, so I'm Second Lieutenant Johnson, and I was actually very interested in joining the Air Force prior to um, even applying for medical school. So my background is in public health, and I was looking to um, you know find my career path w within that, and so I was very interested in uh, possibly pursuing public health within the United States Air Force. It's a very interesting environment for that, a uh, very specific population that you'd be working with there. And so it was through talking with an Air Force recruiter about public health that they said, well, if you know, just so you know that this is an option if you are interested in going back to school. And so after thinking about it, I was very interested in getting that clinical aspect um, as part of my you know, qualifications. And so I did decide that I wanted to at least apply for medical school and that the Air Force HPSP would be a great way to do that. And thankfully I was able to get in, but I would say for me, it was more about wanting to be in, in the US Air Force in service no matter what. So even if I didn't get into medical school, I was actually planning to um, go ahead and join uh, possibly as well. So it was, to me, the decision was more about uh, the service aspect of it. And of course, the, the scholarship aspect certainly helps a lot. So that that's my story. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. What are some ways that you can best prepare for officer training school? Uh, I'm Lieutenant Spencer, and I would say that one of the best ways you can prepare is uh, upping your physical fitness. You'll want to know what the requirements are for your age, and gender in terms of sit-ups, push-ups, and the run time. So definitely don't wait here to start working out and getting those skills. Secondly, I would say that you should try to get your uniforms if you can. If you live close enough to an Air Force base, try to get your OCPs, that's, that's what we're wearing, in these videos, and then also your blues uniform. It can be a little confusing like what you'll need, but they do have a list of the items that go on the uniform, and you can ask the people at the base too for their help. Name tags especially are really important because it can take a couple weeks if you don't expedite them to get them once you're here at OTS. And then lastly, I would say it's helpful to learn rank structure and different ranks because once you get here, you'll be expected to know that and it just takes some of the stress off. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. What has been your favorite part of Commission's officer training? Okay, so first introducing myself, I'm OT Brasseur. And I think my favorite part is honestly just been the teamwork part. I love working together as our flight. Um, had, had our ups and downs, of course, as, you know, 12 people who are total strangers coming and living together and then being together all the time, essentially. But I feel like we've all worked through the issues really well together. We work really well together and just being able to go out and do things together and work as a team. That has been my favorite part. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> what is your favorite part of being a flight leader? My favorite part is that... Um, where everyone got to work together to finish some assignments um, that really, um, I don't know, really motivated me, motivated me to become a, to continue as a flight leader. And that's about it. Thank you, sir. Yes. What has been your favorite part of officer training? Oh, <laughs> you should have told me before. Okay, I'm Crouch. My favorite part 
has been spending so much time with these people who are really awesome. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be really sad to leave you guys. Not that sad to leave OTS. Um, and then my favorite part of actual OTS was probably the leadership reaction course because that was really fun. We got to work as a team. Um, yeah, I just thought it really showed all the great qualities that we have. So yeah, that's all. <laughs> What suggestions do you have for future officer trainees regarding the physical training test? Well, first off, my name is Second Lieutenant Tanner McQuarrie. Make sure that you progressively overload yourself, so building up those push-ups and sit-ups and those run distances over time. Don't overload their body because that can possibly get you injured. And also go online and um, look up the proper form. Um, that would help you excel. Just get, keep getting out there. Don't get discouraged. Um, that's the most important thing and just keep working at it. I like to mix my strength and cardio days and then always have one day off a week. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. What has been the most challenging part of officer training? Okay, so I'm Lieutenant Dustin Rogers. And the most difficult part of OTS training? She counted 10. Um, I think it would be the stress from not being able to sleep and then the combination with your assignments early in the morning, coupled with physical fitness, and then have it eat within 10 minutes. But if you uh, perform and submit MFRs, you can have snacks. Why did you decide or what made you decide to choose the Air Force Health Profession Scholarship Program for medical school? Well, I'm Lieutenant Lockler, and I decided to do the HPSP program with the Air Force because my dad is a pilot, so I have a lot of empathy for pilots, but also he introduced me to um, the, the idea before applying to medical school, so as soon as I got accepted, I decided to go for it, and I was really excited that I got in. And it happened really fast, but I like airplanes, and it's a, it has a lot to do with the camaraderie. So I'm glad I'm here. It's been great, and uh, it's been a great journey, honestly. Thank what you. What is your role as an air battle manager in the Air Force? Basically, my role as an air battle manager is going to be providing a basic air picture for other aircraft in any area of operations around the world. Basically, anywhere. There are going to be aircraft flying around, American aircraft flying around. Uh, we will be providing uh, intelligence and surveillance for them, for those aircraft. Thank you, sir. Here. How do you think officer training school has made you into a better leader? All right, so my name is Lieutenant Udy, and I am from Idaho. And one thing, one big thing that I've learned here at OTS about leadership is just taking the initiative and the importance of being assertive. Uh, OTS is going to push you out of your comfort zone and put you in situations where you're gonna be very uncomfortable, but as a leader, uh, it's just important to really just dive into things, uh, be assertive in all you do, and just take initiative right away. And don't be afraid to make, st make mistakes and just give it your all. And that was something that I, I really learned early on and tried to apply throughout OTS. Thank you, sir. How would you describe the military culture here at OTS? Hmm, okay, so my name is Lieutenant Also Brooks. And for me, coming from having zero military experience, having no um, family members or close friends who were part of the military, it has been a huge adjustment. But I would say the, the top two or three characteristics I can say about it are, um, it's really big on accountability respecting the people around you, the officers and enlisted members, and um, also just being flexible to new changes and new things going on. Um, I would say almost every day we had schedule changes and things that came up where we had to change course. And it was a matter of being holding ourselves accountable, holding our group members accountable to these changes, making sure that we all were ready and prepared to get to the next class or the next um, engagement and just being respectful in our daily interactions. So if it was saluting the proper person the proper way, or just saying a good morning ma'am or good morning sir, um, that structure was very rigorous during this program and I think it overall helped us all become um, better professionals and better leaders.